content is such a confusing matter still after all these years. And I'm just hoping to make a, even a small dent in helping people understand and and how to use it you know, functionally and in a way to grow their business. Welcome to a new episode of Making Sense of Social Media, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and entrepreneurs on how to use content marketing. Now, I love to interview experienced and successful and veteran marketing professionals so that you can benefit from their knowledge. This week, we have Rachel Matice who drops some amazing marketing gold. I can't wait for you to hear everything she has to say. Welcome, Rachel. Excited to have you here on Making Sense of Social Media podcast. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience. Well, thank you so much, Lori. Uh, my name is Rachel Matice, and I'm the founder of RM Creative Services, a creative marketing agency that is based in Los Angeles, California. And we work to amplify brands and artists to stand out from the crowd with social media and strategic content. When you say artists, do you mean like painters or do you mean singers or kind of all of it? Or it's really interesting. Definitely all of the above. I have a, a background working in uh, music journalism. Um, that was one of my side hustles for a long time before I uh, really dove into the marketing world. So um, when I say artists, it's definitely bands, musicians. I've also worked with illustrators, graphic designers, and uh, even like jewelry designers um, and clothing designers who who personally identify with the with the term artist a little bit more than maybe brand owner. Very, very cool. And they, like any other type of brand, artists need help, <laughs> just like the rest of us, right? So, so I'm excited to talk about content marketing and marketing in general with you today. We're hopefully going to touch on a bunch of neat and different and interesting and relevant topics for 2024 for the small business owner. So let's just dive in. I know I sent you a couple of questions to ponder. So I'm just going to start with question number one. What is the main goal of creating and distributing content to your social media platforms? I love this question, Lori, because I think it's so foundational that at the core, social media is about building a connection and building awareness about you, building awareness about your brand and getting that visibility over to your account. So every different platform has a little bit of their own rules, but the goal is to, of course, build those connections and build an audience. Um, you know, now as a brand owner, small business owner, we want to move beyond that to eventually get sales or prospects from social media. But really at its core, um, it's really important to remember that social media is there to make connections and to build an audience. And so that's why in, you know, the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of conversations about people not wanting to feel like they're being sold to on social media. And really, it's just about getting back to some of those roots of creating content that just is entertaining or fun to watch or different. And so I really like to emphasize that with, with my clients. And even when um, we're talking about social media on podcasts like this, that at its core, your goal with social media is to get eyes onto your account. Right. I love that. I have a bit of a side question for you that was tweaked from what you were saying. What do you tell people who, well, let me backtrack a little bit. As an artist, I would assume that they understand that they are the face of their brand. What do you say to small business owners? Let's say somebody who's a candle maker or who loves to walk dogs or make aprons. What do you say to that person who's like, I'm not the face of my brand, like my apron is? How do you help them understand that? No, like it's this face right here <laughs> that you have to share in order to build that connection and that community. I think that there is definitely a middle ground. Um, mm -hmm. I have some more introverted artist clients who 
will tell me like, I don't like the sound of my own voice. I can't do an Instagram live because it just, I'm self-conscious about this or they're just more introverted. And I'm pretty introverted myself too. But if you are using social media as a way to not only, you know, build an audience and connection, but if you do want it to eventually get more sales or leads or build your newsletter, you are going to have to eventually show up in some degree and introduce yourself and who's behind the brand because people want to see who's, who is the person behind the curtain? Um, how do you, and that's how you build trust. And when people can see you, when they can hear you, when they can hear your perspectives. And so um, I do have to say there's, there's a middle ground for small businesses. There's a way to work around you know, some of those things that you might not want to do so that social media fits into your lifestyle, but also how you want to run your brand. There's always ways to do that. Um, But I do have to say you could get away with some of those like faceless types videos for a while, but no matter what, you know, like we're talking about, it's about building connections and there's nothing better for building a connection than showing your face or introducing yourself, or at least letting people hear the sound of your voice. It all helps to build that familiarity. Yeah, that's such a great answer. So many good nuggets in there. How do you measure the effectiveness or and or impact of social content? Like how, how do you, can you tell that it's actually making a difference? And do you use tools or anything like that? But let's just first start with measuring effectiveness. Absolutely. So um, if uh, you aren't familiar already or for our you know listeners of this podcast, uh, KPIs or key performance indicators is a term that you'll have to get very familiar with right away um, because this is just a, a marketing term for data points, you know, measuring the data points that your content does give you on these social media platforms. And which data points that you want to measure, is going to depend based on your goals and also just based on where your brand is at. Um, So if you're a small business owner who perhaps you're just starting out, you're building something from scratch, you're definitely going to have different goals and data points to measure versus an established brand that's maybe been around for 10 years They've built up an audience. They have, um, you know, different products or services that they're selling regularly. So if you're a small business, you're new, you need to get more visibility. People just need to know more about who you are. They, you need more eyeballs on your account, your content. So those types of uh, metrics that you're going to want to keep an eye on would be, of course, your follower growth. It could also be your reach and impressions. Um, And eventually, if you do, um, you know, start measuring those types of data points and you get your followers, well, great. Then they move further down your funnel and they become um, a fan or somebody, a follower that you need to nurture, you know, build that relationship with so that they can eventually take the action that you want. And that action could be to get them to click on your website, to get them to sign up for your email list, to get them to listen to your podcast. So it's Mm -hmm. all about just getting them to take that first step, which is following you or the reach and impressions. Um, And Laura, you also mentioned like, what are some tools that you can use? Um, And if you're small business and budget is still something very top of mind, you can use the Meta Business Suite uh, through Facebook to measure your Facebook and your Instagram analytics. You can even use, um, you know, Instagram's very own uh, platform to manually look at different data points. Um, th- they do have a limitation though, because it is a free platform. Um, but even like the website that you have or your email software, all have like analytics programs built in that can give you some of those foundational data points. But um, like I was saying, as your brand grows, you're going to want to measure more and more impact that you're making. So if your goal is you're launching a new product or service, of course, engagement and leads and sales will be the type of metrics that you want to keep track of. 
And you will need some more sophisticated programs to do that. Um, I love Agora Pulse, even for measuring mentions, because you want to even look at mentions on blog posts. You know, maybe people talk about your brand on a podcast and those types of programs can help aggregate all of that data that is going to be a little bit too difficult to get manually. So again, it kind of just depends on, you know, your goals, the life cycle that your brand is in, uh, but you can always have you know, a big campaign or a smaller campaign. It really is just where you're at. I love that you talked about like just kind of, it's a full circle moment when, you know, you start creating content, getting your brand out there, building the community, but then measuring the effectiveness. It's all part of an overall strategy that needs to be implemented. And, you know, I do my best to make this very unscary <laughs> because it can be very overwhelming for small business owners or somebody just starting out. But something else I really want to touch on because I know you're an expert in the matter is funnels. Like how do you funnel, you know, like it's literally top of funnel right down to, okay, now they've gone all the way down and they're now a customer or client. Like how, how do you implement that in your overall marketing using social media? Oh, I love this question, Lori. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, one really good tip that I have uh, for that is to create some sort of ongoing content series. Um, some marketers I, I've i seen, they've called it like an anchor piece of content, your anchor content. This could be in the form of a blog post. This could be a podcast. It could be a webinar or a video series, a YouTube series. But this is something that you you know create um, with the goal of perhaps you're going to run ads eventually, but you have that anchor piece of content that you publish regularly. And eventually the goal is to get them to move down to a different stage. So we were talking about earlier how, you know, social media is, is there as like a digital portfolio. You know, you expect that it's nobody is going to to know who you are, but let's say they find you on social media because you create a post about the most recent blog that you created. Fantastic. Well, your blog post is your anchor piece of content. Maybe you create one weekly. Well, when you use that, you know, you're going to map out every single stage or touch point that you want that customer or that audience member to go through. So if the blog post is, okay, leave a comment and I'll send it to you directly. Well, the next touch point is getting them, of course, to read the blog post. But then maybe that next stage is in your blog post, you have a place for them to sign up for your email list. So that email list is going to then be in the next part of your funnel. And so every single stage is, it has an intention, it has a goal. Um, and so really the best advice that I can give for a small business owner would be to think of that recurring content series that you enjoy, or it could be easy to create for you so that you can start to build that that evergreen funnel and you'll um, always have new leads or new audience members coming in. Do you know, you just gave a masterclass on marketing, honestly. <laughs> it really is as, I, 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 it's not easy, but it's simple, right? Like there are steps to take. It doesn't matter if it's 2012 marketing, 2024 marketing. It's, it's just, it's follow the steps, you'll get results. And additionally, so thank you for that. But ironically, I want to, you use the word anchor. And just this morning, I was doing some reading and I actually wrote this down. I'm going to, I'm going to read this morning without an anchor, there's nothing to hold you in place. So having that anchor is just, is so pivotal to anybody's success. And I feel like personally, I lost my anchor a while back and I've just been like, flailing and but you know I feel like I've now reattached that anchor to myself in the form of this podcast and you know my own marketing funnels and just 
you know, I'm so excited to bring amazing guests like you and the others that I've already interviewed and have yet to interview to bring this amazing value to small business owners. So thank you for being a part of it, Rachel. I'm so honored to have you here. And what are some of the best practice tips for creating engaging and relevant content for, you know, everyone's target audience? So I think that there is a little bit of nuance to this question because um, most people, when they think of what's going to be engaging for content, uh, they hear all these different answers and they're like, which one is going to be best for me? And I understand that, you know, a little bit of frustration and overwhelm because as marketers, we try and give the most accurate advice for the brand, no matter, again, what stage they're at, how long that they've been around. But from the brand side, that can be a bit overwhelming because it's like, well, this is a little bit too vague for me. I need it to be more specific. And that's completely fine. But I think with social media, the rules are always going to evolve. They're always going to change. And they're a little bit different from platform to platform. So I always tell my clients, like, don't worry too much about the time of day that you're posting or the number of hashtags that you're using on these different platforms, because at the essence, it's about your messaging. It is about the emotional heartstrings that you are able to pull with your audience and in, in your content. And this could be through your visuals or it could be text. It doesn't have to just be one or the other. And frankly, I've seen uh, brands do this successfully. Um, you know, they can have 500 followers, they can have 5,000 or 500,000. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's a video or a carousel post or static posts. Engaging content comes down to the messaging that's integrated in it. And the emotional response that you want the audience to take away from it. So um, I mentioned I, I used to work in journalism and I like to refer to like journalism's main rules of thumbs, like answering who, what, where, and how with creating your content and creating a good story. Um, because when it comes to creating those good stories and the good content that's engaging, it usually comes down to also the wow factor, or maybe it's heartwarming or thought provoking, or maybe you want your audience just to laugh at it, to find humor in it, or even it could be like anger inducing. Do you want your, your audience to get uh, a bit riled up from this message? Cause it's some, it's an important cause that's important to you. So um, when it comes to creating engaging content, I really think it's, most important to think about your audience's emotional, like those psychological ties. It's and not just creating a bunch of reels. It's not just creating a bunch of carousel posts. Um, right. You get the most valuable, the most value from your content when it really hits that emotional heartstring with your audience. Absolutely. And so in that knowing our audience, because every business owner has a different target audience, like knowing them intimately is so, so important. I know I stress that over and over and over with my coaching clients as well. Like it's, it, it's no longer about, you know, what, what I offer is not about that anymore. It's about, like you said, pulling at the heartstrings and letting the, the, the audience reading or hearing or seeing know that we understand and we can help. And how do you balance um, the quality versus quantity debate uh, that surrounds social media marketing content? We touched on this a little bit earlier with like, we're getting these mixed messages of produce more content. No, don't produce more content. It's just getting lost. So what's your take on, on the quality versus quantity debate? So I do have a, a arguably a little bit of a controversial take on this. Um, 
I love just it. because <laughs> I, I mean, I've been working in, in content and in social media and marketing for over 13 years now. And so I've had the opportunity to, I've worked with enterprise level brands who have multi-million dollar budgets for content every quarter, all the way down to the solopreneurs and the DIYers. And um, of course, the rules will vary a little bit, again, just depending on your brand, where you're at, the size of it. And of course, do you have the money to um, get the support that you need to create more content? So for, for me, I always emphasize quality 100%. Um, mm-hmm. In my agency, uh, with my clients, we really take the approach of timeless long-term strategies for creating sustainable social media approaches. And uh, because I can, you know, also consider myself an artist, I'm a photographer myself, um, the types of content that I'm attracted to are not necessarily the types of of content that we see in the quantity side. So Mm -hmm. at the beginning of your journey as a small business owner, Um, yes, you're going to probably have to produce, uh, you know, quite a bit of content and you might have to work up to, you know, creating content in general, that's consistent and consistent for you might be three times per week. Um, and it's okay at the beginning, especially if you're an introvert, you don't, you're a bit shy to get in front of camera, like the faceless real videos, they're okay. Like, I I completely understand they're easy to create. They're simple. You're taking snippets of your everyday life. This is fantastic. Um, But I will say eventually that content starts to eat like to plateau and you start to look very similar to a lot of other people online. And that's not the kind of vibe that I want for, for you or for other brands. You do eventually have to graduate to a new echelon um, and amplify your content to really make yourself stand out. And how you're gonna stand out is, you know, it, you know, improving your visuals. Maybe it's doing a brand photo shoot so that you have a variety of images that are, you know, with your brand colors, you know, shows off your personality. Um, so I I there is a little bit of nuance with that question, Lori, about the quality versus quantity. I always emphasize quantity and even posting less if need be so that the the content really is unique and different and makes you stand out. But I do understand the approach for uh, for quantity that is, you know, produce producing a high volume. Maybe you have a really aggressive goal that you have to meet and producing a higher quantity can get you there. So there's nuance to everything. And I can see, you know, both sides of that strategy and approach. Um, So just, you know, for, for listeners, keep that in mind. Like, I think it's definitely okay to start with that, but, you know, as you get more experience as a brand owner, um, you just have to keep leveling up your brand. Yeah. Hundred percent. Oh, you've offered such amazing advice so far. Again, I, this is masterclass level information. I love it. How do you leverage the power of storytelling and emotion in your social media content? I know we've touched on emotion already, but storytelling is a bit of a different layer to that. Like, can you maybe share some examples of successful stories or campaigns that have? create that you've created or participated in storytelling is is in my opinion is one of the most important aspects of social media marketing so I'd love to hear what you have to say agreed and and I feel like storytelling is also one of those buzzwords that has really come up a lot <laughs> in marketing the last couple of years and uh, as a as a whole, it could be very overwhelming and confusing to just think, well, what do you mean storytelling? Um, and I also just like to go back to think about it from the journalism standpoint, like any good storytelling or storytelling approach has at least two components to it. There's some form of conflict or friction or 
some, yeah, some sort of conflict. And then there's a resolution to that conflict or what's the outcome of that. So you always keep those two components in mind. You could craft stories from, from practically anything. And so I like to say, no matter what, from a foundational branding perspective, you can always start out with um, putting stories together about how you started your brand and why. You can talk about your brand values, your brand mission statement. And these are fantastic evergreen pieces. You know, people are going to be finding your brand at different, you know, different months, different years. And you can always repurpose those. You can always tweak them a little bit so that you can, you know, have fresh looking pieces of content, but essentially they're the same. And so it's really important, I think, to have those, you know, foundational storytelling pieces, but then you can also start looking at experiences in your everyday work life. So how can you integrate storytelling from a lesson that you learned from your last client or customer? What's something that you can take away from that experience? Um, or like we were talking about, where was the brand inspiration? Where did it come from? You know, what were some of the milestones or the pain points that you had to go through to get to this point? And you can talk about storytelling again in visual form. It could be a graphic. It could be through your brand photography or videos. And you can also tell it through text. Um, if you're a stronger writer, like LinkedIn is such a great platform for this. Um, you can start a blog. And so here are a couple examples also uh, with clients for, you know, I guess beyond the those foundational branding aspects that we were talking about. So um, I work with a luxury home decor brand. Actually, she makes homemade candles. And oh, okay. one of her biggest, she's a very mystical uh, focused brand. It's about um, the Celtic wheel of the year. And she also got inspiration from the Greek gods. So I was so excited when she became a client because I was like, oh my gosh, you can talk about so many great stories about the Greek gods and ah. how they relate to, you know, business or, um, another big trend that we've seen is with like astrology and Zodiac. Um, a lot of, um, I've seen like tarot readers or yoga instructor instructors, they use storytelling with the astrological signs, with readings that are going on. And how does that apply to your business right now? Or what perspective from that reading can you apply to your personal life? Um, so even just very basic, you know, inspirations from, you know, the books that we love growing up, you know, the Greek the Greek myth, the astrology, the zodiac, any of your personal interests, you can really weave into your brand with your personal experiences. So those are a couple just um, specific examples from a very basic storytelling, you know, perspective. But and of course, with visuals and photography, it's great too. You can tell yeah. a, a story just with props, with the lighting that you use. And really show off like a transformation, especially if a, if somebody's going through like a rebrand. Um, yeah. So those are a couple of ways that I've helped our clients to incorporate some different elements of storytelling into their into their content. I love that so much. Like there's just there's no end to possibility with how we put stories out there to you know to help mm -hmm. enhance the the lives of our clients and customers and those watching our stories. So I'm not sure um, if you've seen some of this. It is definitely one of the latest trends, but it's, you know, you were talking about how um, storytelling doesn't always have to be visual. It can be words. And a lot of what I've seen lately is people like making notes on their notes app on their iPhone or whatever. And then like literally taking a screenshot of that and sharing that as an Instagram story. And or a TikTok video or a reel and, and like those types of just every day, I'm just writing down my ideas because that's what's happening in the moment. And then sharing that with my audience, that's become very trendy at the moment. So 
I, you know, just again, emphasizing how easy it can be to, to get our, ourselves and our stories out there to help impact our audience and, and help them to grow in, in ways that they desire. So Rachel, thank you so much. You've offered so much amazing advice for those watching or listening today. Where can people find you? How can people get to work with you? Because you clearly are awesome. <laughs> uh, okay. thanks so much Lori um, well we are on practically all the social media platforms but we're primarily on Instagram and on LinkedIn um, and our handle is the same across all of our platform it's just at RM Creative Services um, okay. otherwise folks can visit our website it's rmcsofficial.com um, and because we're at the start of the new year, it's fresh. We do have some openings in our agency uh, for creative services. If folks do want to um, hire a team to help out with their social media, their brand photo shoots, even their website copy. Um, nice. And we also have um, a couple of different low cost products for small businesses and DIYers who might have to be a bit more mindful of their budget right now. Um, and uh, we have all of those products and trainings and eBooks and uh, the ARM Creative Services Skill Shop on our website. So uh, definitely encourage listeners if um, they're looking for some more cost-effective options for, for working with us or for advice, um, I'm that's one of my goals this year is I'm, I'm adding a few more workshops and trainings uh, okay. to that part of our business to specifically help you know, small business owners. That's awesome. Wonderful. Again, I'm so thrilled to have had interviewed you today and gotten, again, this masterclass level of information. I can't wait to share it with everybody. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you, Lori, for having me.